Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Let's let's uh, let's start. So, um, yeah. I'll just uh, just uh, thanks for our sponsors. Um, call. Uh, and I'll just quickly introduce myself. Um, yeah. My name is Salman Zafar, and I've been uh, part of Salesforce Mohana for over two years, twelve years now. I uh, work with small to medium businesses and also enterprises. Um, yeah, work with a variety of solutions uh, in terms of industry experience. I work with insurance, FMCG, dairy, quite a bit, uh, um, accounting, and so, and recently I've been working with uh, non-profits as well. And that's the experience I'm just going to share uh, with, uh, with you all that how uh, my journey with non-profits um, worked. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna quickly talk about what is um, Salesforce.org uh, is, and yeah, what kind of offering uh, that 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 does. I mean, how it's different from Salesforce.com, um, and yeah, what are the sectors primarily uh, are targeted in uh, in that uh, sector. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is Salesforce and PSP and what, what that is. Um, and lastly, we'll just discuss about what, yeah, how Salesforce itself is helping um, the community through its uh, uh, program called One Person Pledge. Um, yeah, so what is uh, Salesforce.org? Uh, um, in terms of... Um, yeah, so Salesforce, of course, started with .com, uh, so which is we all know that it's, it's a CRM, and uh, we and, and it worked with like Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, and lots of tons of other clouds we've got. Uh, but .org is, of course, specific for the nonprofits. Um, and in terms of nonprofit, there are like two main sectors: the nonprofit uh, organization, uh, and then also the education sector itself. Um, the and then also, I mean, the Salesforce wants to like place funds or build more stronger uh, connections within the community. Uh, and these are like some numbers, um, like in terms of uh, revenue, uh, like social value. That's basically so that they have contributed with those organizations that Salesforce is working with. Um, and also like in terms of the, um, each like nonprofit has got some mission, uh, some values, and then also how Salesforce has helped them increase those, um, uh, improve their efficiency in terms of achieving their uh, mission. Cool. Um, then um, I, I will, of course, um, share a bit of a quick short video as well. Uh, let's just give me a second. I'll just have to bring that up again. Um, okay. And on navigating an increasingly digital world, preparing your organization by adopting technology is critical to thriving in the future. Nonprofit Cloud is a set of solutions built on a single trusted platform that allows your marketing, fundraising, and program management teams to work together and gain a full view of your supporter relationships. Let's see how Nonprofit Cloud can help unify your entire staff to deliver experiences that surpass the expectations of today's digital first constituents. Nonprofit Cloud helps marketing teams increase awareness find new constituents, build long-term relationships, and then measure their results and return on investment in real time. Teams can build awareness and engage with potential supporters through their preferred channels like email, social, mobile, or via online display or search ads. Target those interested in your cause, then respond quickly and thoughtfully to inquiries in real time. Once engaged, create personalized journeys across one or more channels, including your website, ads, email, and mobile, based on your supporters' individual preferences, interests, and capacity to support. For online giving campaigns, spin up branded giving pages in just a few clicks without code or complexity. 
Then, track your marketing efforts in real time to measure ROI and metrics to help you optimize. The same platform helps your fundraising team cultivate and steward all supporters, from sustainers to major donors. Development officers can start their day with important metrics and daily tasks. Understand supporters with a single view of giving history, household information, engagement with your organization, program interest, and more. See donation progress by stage, understand next steps, and use a predefined list of tasks to tailor further communications with donors based on their level. And don't miss an interaction by having emails automatically recorded in Salesforce. Your fundraising services teams can enter check data and process online gifts within Salesforce and use accounting subledger to prepare fundraising information for the finance team. Programs are at the heart of your mission, so tracking and managing them effectively and reporting outcomes to funders is key. And no matter the type or complexity of your programs, Nonprofit Cloud empowers staff to better connect, organize, and scale programs and services. Program managers can plan their day with a high-level view of what's happening across all programs, including active engagements, at-a-glance metrics, and tasks that need immediate attention. Whether you deliver a job readiness program or an animal adoption program, you can understand participant interactions and keep them progressing towards their goals. Surface key information like preferred name, program cohort, and holistic services delivered and streamline data entry with our bulk service delivery tool. For organizations that work with clients, service providers can drill deeper into case plans, notes, incidents, and assessments with nonprofit cloud case management. By managing your mission on one platform, you can see trends and report on outcomes across your entire organization. Easily visualize dollars raised, programs completed, and more. Then send reports to funders and supporters. Extend your use of Salesforce with the App Exchange, which gives you access to hundreds of useful apps available for nonprofits. And join a powerful ecosystem and community to get you started on your journey. Now you can adapt to the new normal by managing your entire mission from one powerful platform. Learn how you can get started with nonprofit. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, of course, there's quite a bit of information in that uh, video to absorb. Um, but in terms of like some of the Salesforce um, key products we are talking about here, it's like, of course, you, you have seen there's like a targeted campaigns. Uh, those are like through a marketing cloud journey builder. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so there are different applications which there are different Salesforce cloud which have been used as part of this uh, demo. Um, so yeah, marketing cloud is one of them. Then also like Salesforce uh, platform, and then uh, Salesforce. Uh, and, and for this session, we're gonna mostly talk about the nonprofit side of things. We won't get into the details of the education um, side of Salesforce.org. Um, yeah, so there are like a lot of. Um, uh, there are quite a few applications which are basically installed on top of Salesforce platform and then through which um, all of that uh, non-profit magic happens pretty much. Hi, Salman. Uh, Sorry to... Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. So, uh, Salman, did you get a chance to post the REPL URL here on the chat? Yep. Yeah. Can... Did it? Okay. Thank you. Uh, and please don't forget to run the raffle and let me know if you want me to do that for you. Yeah, if you can. Yeah, I mean, I have called that and I haven't put that in the chat. Yeah, if you can. Do all right, it. Let, me, let me do it for you. All right. All right. Cool. No, thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Mark, please continue. Yeah, 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 I'm going to do that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, sorry, you might have to. Uh, can you um, send me the link for um, that uh, the one which I have to basically use to stop? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sending yeah. you by direct message, right? 
Okay, yeah, that's all right. Uh, you can maybe put on Slack or something. Yeah, whatever works for you. Okay, I'm Slack. I'm doing Slack. Okay, yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, yeah, so let me share my screen again. Cool. All right, so uh, Salesforce uh, NPSP, uh, Salesforce Nonprofit uh, Success Pack. Um, what that is. So, if if it's a if it's a new sales if, if you are signing up for a new Salesforce org, uh, of course these all of these packages comes with it. Uh, if you are of course opting for a nonprofit org, uh, but if you've got a like a Salesforce greenfield environment or you're you're in a developer environment and you want to play with Salesforce nonprofit, then there's like a series of app exchange product which you can install on your Salesforce Enterprise Edition, and you can install on your Dev Edition as well if you want to. There's no restriction on it, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, and yeah, sorry if, if it isn't correct. Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll apologize in advance. But I mean, to my knowledge, you can install on a developer edition as well all those packages. Uh, but pretty much what that does is it is it is built on top of Salesforce uh, native like Sales Cloud. And then um, what happened is that it is like it has extended Salesforce capabilities. So like for in, for in a conventional Salesforce. Uh, a CRM model, you will treat opportunity as like a sales opportunity, but in a nonprofit world, your opportunity would be something like a donation opportunity. Like for instance, if you want to track, like for instance, um, if I talk about like a, a nonprofit organization who wants, who have applied for like a donate grant or a donation from some other, uh, like a government entity or like some other foundation, that's like an opportunity or like if I am a donor and I want to donate to your cause, then I could be an opportunity as well. Um, yeah, so nonprofit basically, it, like I said, it's built on top of Salesforce uh, native like sales cloud and then there it, it, it extends its functionality uh, further to it. And then it has got like modules where you want to break up the payments and uh, like a, a like once if you want to break up the payment on a monthly basis or yearly basis or whatever, um, you can you can break that up, uh, and it is and it is it is built in such a way um, because that it, it works for most of the nonprofits. Um, like I've worked with like three nonprofits so far, and and it is pretty much uh, and, and what are most of the use cases which the nonprofits work in a day to day life. I mean those are uh, covered in there, like in terms of marketing, communication campaign management, fundraising, uh, things like that. So they are, um, yeah, pretty much uh, built across it. Um, these are like some of the key features of nonprofit success pack. Uh, so you can manage a contact or a household contact, like a household is a terminology which is used in nonprofit where you like, like uh, like if uh, my me and my wife, um, we, we are part of one household and then if they want to manage it in a way. Uh, like a household and like my, my kids could be part of my household as well until they are um, adult. Uh, uh, so um, yeah, so it, it provides that flexibility and there are like other kind of constituents as well, which can be managed like volunteers or like organization, affiliate organization, things like that. Or like if there are a relationship between the contacts, um, like for example, if um, if I'm, I've got, I'm, uh, I'm one of the donor or a constituent or volunteer um, uh, or a client for that um, uh, nonprofit organization, and if they want to track the relationship uh, between different contacts, I mean you, that can be tracked as well, and it gives like pictorial representation as well. Um, that membership. So if they're like, um, for instance, if I want to become a member um, for one of the nonprofits, um, yeah. So then, yeah, that memberships can be done, and like if you, and it can manage some of the like, uh, tiers as well. And then grant uh, lifecycle management, uh, like I mentioned, if you want to apply for a grant uh, through an organization, then of course you can manage that through as well. Or, and then there are donations you you might have seen in the in that video as well, where there's like a. Uh, branded fancy page where you can just go in and uh, donate for uh, and support that cause. It could be one of one of donation or it supports recurring donations as well. And then that can be tracked through the accounting ledger and the finance can also work through it. Um, yeah, so these are like some of the uh, key features um, uh, of uh, nonprofit. Um, 
And any questions uh, so far? So I'll quickly go back to, um, uh, yeah, there might be some of the boring stuff. There is one exciting bit, which I will actually uh, talk about it. But uh, okay, Aditya has got some questions. Any leading parties providing opportunities to work with Salesforce for non-profits in India? Um, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite get the question complete, but if I understood it correctly, I mean, um, is it, you question more around the uh, consulting partners, if if that's the case, um, uh, there would be, I'm, I'm pretty sure there would be some um, consulting partners who would be working with uh, non-profits. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, on top of my, I mean, of course, I don't know uh, um, what, uh, yeah, which organizations are working in India, but I like in, in New Zealand, like I, I'm, okay, so actually I did miss that part of my introduction, I am residing in New Zealand. Um, yeah, so in, in New Zealand, I know some of the partners who are working with it. Um, okay. Um, all right. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm not sure about India, uh, but in, in New Zealand, uh, there are like some of the horse spices. So I'll, I'll talk about the hospice uh, model. Uh, I'm not sure who have, you work with. So hospice is like a um, nonprofit organizations. Um, and actually, I will, uh, I'm not going to have it today to share one of the uh, clients we have worked for. Uh, so, um, and I'll just go to their services as well. So this is um, um, uh, one of the hospice in New Zealand and Mid Canterbury who we work for. So. They provide different services to elderly people in particular. Uh, so like for instance, um, uh, uh, when, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, like for instance, there are some elderly people who does not have that family support. So we, we are from India or Pakistan. We, we, we are pretty much, um, uh, we've got like good uh, family uh, structure, like in a way that we like, either we live in a combined uh, joint family systems or we have got a good family uh, unit system where we can support our elders um yeah so in, in yeah so one of the things which they struggle with their clients is um uh, basically uh like for instance um, the elderly people if they need to go like for example uh to a, a clinic visit and if they uh, need help it like it could be like just as simple as like someone goes to those um, elderly people and then take pick them the, from their home and take to the clinic and give, bring them back or it could be uh, someone that just need a con like uh, someone just need some companionship. Uh, like you, you basically go uh, and visit elderly people and then spend some time with them uh, so that they don't feel that level of loneliness. And that could be another example. Um, yeah. So this, this particular hospital that worked with um, and those uh, that um, that. Um, that group of uh, clients. Um, and they also provide some therapies as well, like chiropractic, um, and, uh, I, think there, I think there are like some other services on their website. Um, yeah, so these are like some other therapies which also they provide uh, to their clients and they have like volunteers. So like for instance, if I am a chiropractor, I can, I can tech, I, I can, or like a, a physiotherapist would be another example. Like if I'm a physiotherapist, I can just be a volunteer with them and I'll say, for every week, I will give you ten hours of my time uh, to you, and then, um, and then, if you have got any clients who are interested in um, uh, physio, uh, if, you, if they need free physiotherapy, I'm happy to support them. Uh, so that comes into the, under that volunteer management category, or there could be some services which could be paid. Uh, they provide it uh, on a uh, uh, basically on a concession basis or something. Um, yeah, so those kind of services, there could be some peer services. They do get donations through uh, different channels, um, through some organizations or uh, yeah, some other, uh, uh, like they like one-off donors as well. Um, they run some campaigns. Um, yeah, so through that they do get it. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know if there are any particular organization which can, which is in India or Pakistan uh, or any any in that part of the world um, uh, using it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, how much of learning from working can be applied in enterprises? Okay. Um, of course, like any uh, on any. Um, it it actually depends of course um that per, that that uh, cycle and like in a, if we just talk about like a pure sales cloud perspective where you got a lead coming in um where you, and then lead becomes a contact account and opportunity i mean that 
that's a learning which 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 is exactly the same so if you if you are starting a, your career um as a uh, you're starting your career on non-profit i mean it doesn't mean that you wouldn't be you would be left behind in terms of le your learning um uh, learning journey on a salesforce um it's it is built on top of salesforce uh, native uh, like sales cloud uh, so a lot of functionality which you see on a sales cloud it are they are they're present there um yeah so you you will be able to replicate your learnings definitely uh, business model. Um, uh, yeah, a question from Ali. Uh, so yeah, business model. It could it could be a different model. Like like for instance, if I just mentioned about a hospice. Um, uh, so their their business. I mean, their, I mean they. So hospice. Um, uh, in uh, uh, not just in New Zealand, like other parts of the world as well. It's they they have they got like different. They report their stores as well. So like for instance, if I've got an extra sofa or a LCD monitor or anything which is on a working condition. And I want to donate it, so I, I will just go there and drop drop it there, and then they will sell it, and then the money they get it from it, they will basically gonna use it for community well being. Um, yeah, so that's one example. Uh, then there could be uh, other kind of there could be like uh, some um, like um, the, uh, the listeners who are from Pakistan. Um, I mean, we have got like some big, uh, big uh, NGOs like Edi Foundation is one of them, which is basically. Uh, run from, of course, from donations uh, from different parts of the world, and they provide ambulance services or, um, yeah, or funeral services or things like that to their clients. Um, so that could be uh, another. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not a public business model, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, they, they they work for the community well-being. So, and in terms, uh, end users of non um, end users, uh, the don't the volunteers in most cases. Um, yeah, so the, and the volunteers, like for instance, if I talk about one of the use cases which I just talked about, um, where a volunteer is paying a visit to uh, a client, um, and they just basically need to, uh, um, and they need, and we need to capture that what activity has been done. Like for instance, they they um, the hospice example, they wanted to track that how many hours a volunteer is spending with uh, different. Uh, um, different uh, clients. So when a volunteer is paying visit to a client and helping and providing any kind of service, and then they need to capture notes around it that I visited the client, client wasn't at home, or uh, or if they or if they're just uh, having uh, some kind of um, uh, communication, or if they need even like uh, to track their past history as well, like history as well. Like an example, if they're regularly a client is making a visit. Uh, on a uh, weekly basis or a monthly basis, and then if, if the volunteer wants to capture their client history, um, yeah, that well, in terms of past visit and things like that. So volunteers, uh, social workers, uh, they are um, in most cases they are the end users. Or in case of hospice, I did mention about the, the store um, as well, where they've got a, a, a physical store where people come and donate uh, their um, their stuff. Um, so those, uh, and then there could be like walk in, um, like I, I could be just walking into a hospital and I'll say, oh, I want to become a volunteer as well. So they, yeah, they can just uh, sign you in. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, in, in the, in the, so I need have another question around whether Salesforce can be integrated with multiple clouds. So in this uh, particular demo, um, this is, I mean, they, they are integration with, of course, Salesforce Marketing Cloud. It's basically a Salesforce Enterprise Edition. And on top of that, they're like app exchange product. So, uh, and yeah, so it can it can be uh, it has got all those features which any enterprise Salesforce um, edition has. Uh, so they can be integrated with uh, other other systems through middleware or point to point integrations. Um, restriction and limitation. Um, okay, so um, I will come to uh, in the next slide, and that will partially uh, cover. Uh, your question, uh, Ali. Uh, so yeah, and if it doesn't answer, then yeah, feel free to uh, post yeah something more. Um, post more, yeah, another question. Okay. Um, so Salesforce one person pledge um, and power of us. So Salesforce has made a pledge that they are gonna don't, uh, they are gonna use one percent of their annual revenue. 
um, and it's not just like Salesforce is doing it. Like there are a lot of other organizations globally which are which are doing that, and they have pledged that the one percent of their annual revenue they are gonna put give that back to the community. And Salesforce is also uh, pledging that one percentage, uh, and and you would see a lot of uh, Salesforce partners as well. Not I would not say a lot. I mean I've seen some partners who we have for there was say one percent pledge um, badge on their website or things like that. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, so one percent of revenue it, it is shared back to the community. So what and Salesforce has got a program called Power of Us program. What that program does is, uh, I mean, if you are looking for a very specific information, or I would think I would say that's probably that's one of the if you want to work with a nonprofit and Aditya, that might come back to your question in a way that if you want to if you see a nonprofit organization around you and if you want to work with them and make any difference in their life. I mean, Salesforce provide 10, and no, I will not, will not use the word uh, free license, it was like a donated license that comes through that one person pledge. So you can get a uh, 10 person, you can get 10 free enterprise licenses or donated free uh, Salesforce licenses uh, for, a, for a non-profit um, organization. Um, and then there are like, uh, and if, if there, there are more than 10 licenses required, then um, they, 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 are, they are still discounted. So I think normally, if I remember top of my head, it's uh, like a Salesforce Enterprise license cost more than 100, uh, 100 USD per user per month, uh, probably around 120, 125. Uh, but for if, you, if, if it's a nonprofit organization, it's, it's the cost is gonna be a lot less. Yeah, but the 10 starting 10 free license and uh, 10 uh, starting 10 license are donated by Salesforce as part of that one person pledge. So Salesforce kind of pay for it, or you can say it's donated. They don't charge you for it for the lifetime, um, any any nonprofit. And if anything um, is uh, any more license are required on top of it, that's, uh, yeah, that's um, discounted as well. And this offer um, is of course like for like Salesforce uh, platform, but even like if um, you, uh, you might have noticed in the um, demo video as well, where Salesforce Marketing Cloud has been used. Uh, so that's also discounted. So um, yeah, if you're a nonprofit, if you can prove to Salesforce that you are actually a legitimate a nonprofit, Salesforce give you a gifts discount on it. Uh, so yeah, for a normal uh, commercial uh, customer uh, where marketing cloud can be a bit expensive, it's, it, could, it could work a lot better for uh, a nonprofit uh, organization. Um, and how do you, how can you get to know that uh, whether for your particular country, but you, what, what the, what's the documentation required for it, um, for, um, for, uh, for applying for those free licenses? It's pretty easy. I mean, of course you can Google it up, but I will post the link um, on the uh, chat as well. Like, and if you, and it's, Pretty easy to sign up, and if you if you see uh, any organization which meets those uh, requirements, um, um, and you want to work with them, uh, I mean, of course, I think as a as a as we are part of the Salesforce ecosystem, uh, and of course we all all have got our jobs, and we are we are working um, our full time jobs, and if you want, but if you want to use your skill and actually volunteer for a certain cause around you and it, if it meets uh, those conditions um, in terms of get acquiring those donated license it's it's a good opportunity and uh, to work through that cause um, but um, I, i'll add one thing more to it because um, we have to be because salesforce is donating all those licenses so we have to be a bit uh, cautious not just cautious but also um, that we yeah that we don't abuse that um, uh, donated license and we use it for the right purpose, whatever what's what's their what they're intended for. Um yeah, so that's the eligibility criteria. I'm gonna put that into the uh, chat. Yeah, that's the document. Um, so, um yeah, like for instance if you want if I go to like Pakistan or maybe India, so like this is this is a documentation required which uh, yeah uh, tax exemption act for Pakistan, or I think there would be a similar for India as well. They have registration for the certificate for trust for society. So each country, for each country, there's a the, uh, separate requirement, but yeah, once we basically provided Salesforce pretty quick with those licenses, you get 
those licenses pretty quickly and to the Salesforce NPSP uh, package, it comes with it once you want to sign up with uh, for a nonprofit or, uh, org. Um, yeah, and so and you can basically start straight away using it. Um, but yeah, if there are additional features, then you can use it on top of it. Um, okay, is there any career growth for dev admins around this specific nonprofit cloud? Uh, this is not famous compared to the other clouds. Yeah, definitely, it's not one of the most popular uh, area to be working in. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's just um, the nonprofit um, uh, cloud is there. It, it is picking up. It is a niche market. It's, it's it is a growing market. And even if I just talk about it, so New Zealand is a compared to if you if you're comparing with other uh, countries like. US, Canada, UK, or, or other other markets. So New Zealand is a pretty small market in terms of if if you are comparing with it. Um, but even in New Zealand, it's, it is a it is a growing sector, uh, non-profit and non-profit also includes. Um, it's not. Uh, I have actually missed uh, that in my uh, deck. So it's the education sector. And second is, um, of course, non-profits, and the third is uh, net zero. Uh, so. Um, yeah, Next Zero is also part of um, Salesforce.org. Um, so there, are, so uh, you might have heard a lot of organizations these days. They are talking about Net Zero. Hope they hope they can reduce their carbon emission. Um, yeah. So and for that, I, I don't think there's an, enough expertise for a nonprofit out there in the market. Uh, so there is area for growth. Um, of course, I mean it's it's not one of the popular clouds. I, I mean, I, I mean, I I work with. That's pretty decently, um, yeah. So um, yeah, you wouldn't find a lot of people in that area. But like I said, even like I uh, yeah, what I know, like even in New Zealand, there are a lot of organizations which are going on the Salesforce nonprofit cloud. Um, and hospices was a very small example. I mean, that's what I work with. Uh, but there are some some partners uh, who are working with um, the bigger organizations as well. Uh, they like some foundations, um, yeah. So it is, it is, I mean, it is, it is a relatively um, new market. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll quickly go through one more thing. So like, even if you go into this, uh, did I post a link? I'm not sure. I had to, okay. Uh, so there are, uh, there's a qualification criteria as well. And if you look on the, um, uh, non-profit organization who are eligible, there's quite a big variety there. Uh, so from religious to charitable organization, to scientific and so they are, um, humanitarian, and then yeah, of course, uh, retirement care, mental health, community services, and blood and organ transplant banks. I, I mean, I, from my life back in Pakistan, I know there's a lot of blood banks out there um, who are doing a pretty good job. Um, yeah, so I mean, if um, so there are quite a few um, yeah, type of organizations who does meet that criteria, and I think um, to a certain degree, like I said, I mean, in terms of technical expertise to implement this, it's it's not it's not massively difficult. I mean, it's uh, it's a pre-built package. Of course, you can configure it, customize it to a requirement for a particular organization. Um, I think to a certain degree, it also yeah uh, come to like the, if we can as a as a as a part of uh, um, like part of like Salesforce ecosystem, if we can try to donate like one percent of our time, of and uh, what the of our actual like we we all know how many uh, billable hours we have got in a year, and out of that, if we can not just one person, I think even if we do like 0.5 percent of it, we can make a difference for some some organizations who are doing pretty good job out there. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, and even like in the education sector, I haven't explored, like I said, I haven't explored uh, that area that much, but there are like uh, quite an organization, uh, education sector as well, which does, which does meet criteria for those donated license. And then on top of that, um, other uh, discounted license as well. And then, yeah, so I mean, have a read through if you are really looking uh, to, um, work with any nonprofit and like I mentioned before, um, I'm pretty, uh, I've, I've worked quite recently with a nonprofit. So there's a bit of learning curve for me as well. And I've, I've learned um, uh, quite a bit 
and I'm happy to share uh, my experience uh, with the community. And if someone is happy, is working with them in a non-profit area, I will be um, yeah keen to hear their experiences as well as if someone needs help, feel feel free to reach out to me. I mean, I'm I'm I'll, I should be able to easily find on uh, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, so if 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 need be, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, uh, yep. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, that's my LinkedIn profile. If you want to find me there, Twitter handle is there. I don't use it that much. Um, yeah, and that's all my website. Um, so these are uh, some uh, communication uh, channels you, you can reach out. Um, Aditya has got a question. Am I right in my understanding? Yes. Yeah. So even if you've got a non-profit um, license, so non-profit uh, is it's not a separate type of license. Uh, if, I, if I have to be very clear about it, so it's it has got like it's like a normal Salesforce license, like normal Salesforce enterprise license. And yeah, so anything you can imagine which you can access with the Salesforce enterprise license, you can get all those features. There's no um, there's a distinction to it, and it's non-mandatory. To use Salesforce non-profit success pack with the, the list of Apex in products. If you want to build any for everything from the scratch, uh, like I, if I would share like one of the learning from uh, when I when I started on non-profit, like when I picked it up, um, I, I wasn't much aware of the non-profit um, success pack. All the there was trailheads um, out there which you can learn before you pick it up uh, your work. But um, yeah, like I in this instead like when I picked. Uh, that piece of work uh, for hospice, I went in and in my dev org, I enabled uh, person accounts. And then it, uh, because I was like, oh, most of the clients are individuals, we're not talking about any organizations. But um, an NPSP has got a better way of dealing uh, with the individuals. Um, so, yeah, so I would say if you are starting on a non profit success path, uh, go with the trailheads first. Um, it's not there are not a lot of them there, but they're pretty good in terms of getting a better understanding what that um, non-profit success pack does. But talking about that, if, if just in case, if they're working with a non-profit, uh, non-profit which does not um, meet with the NPSP uh, things, or you think that it's not the right fit for their organization, you can just request for enterprise license uh, for your um, uh, for that organization you can just build your own thing of course i mean there's more dev build effort to it you probably don't know want to choose that route uh, but it is it is the enterprise license uh, 10 donated enterprise licenses if it's meet the criteria um yeah and then you can get app exchange products yeah cool um any other questions? 